My governing principle, I think I've probably said it too many times, but I'll say it again. Rates are going to be higher than we like, and they'll stay here longer than we want. Welcome back at Market Empire, your partner giving you your daily dose about the latest crypto news and thoughts of different analysts and investors. Watch it till the end of the video. A record high inflation wave swept across the United States in 2022 and 2023, hitting everyone at the gas tank, supermarket, and what seems like every other basic necessity. The story of 2022 and the beginning of 2023 was the Federal Reserve raising interest rates and the soft landing that followed. The majority of experts and commentators predicted that the landing would be a disaster, but many news outlets are reporting something different. EOS.com has just recently published an article titled, Why Rate Hikes Haven't Affected the Economy More, in which the authors point out that the unemployment rate is currently at its lowest level in the last half century. A similar economic update was reported by the Wall Street Journal in their article, which stated that the world economy is doing well. The people who run the central banks will not like hearing this. According to an article published by the Wall Street Journal in the United States in January, inflation picked up and spending as well as income increased. The price index for personal consumption expenditures rose by 5.4% in January compared to the same month, a year earlier, as reported by the Commerce Department, which is the preferred inflation gauge of the Federal Reserve. At the same time, consumer spending in the United States increased by 1.8% in January compared to the previous month, marking the largest increase in nearly two years. In January, wage and salary growth was 0.9%, which was more than twice as fast as the prior month's growth rate. Investor and billionaire Chamath Palihapitiya expressed his concern regarding the manipulation of real data in his All In podcast. His concerns range from Wall Street's earnings to the amount of stimulus that is going into the pockets of consumers. Chamath is of the opinion that we will be in an environment characterized by high inflation for a longer period of time than the Fed and mainstream media would have us believe. But as long as we are aware that this will continue for a longer period of time than we anticipated, we will be able to adequately prepare. Let's pay attention to what Chamath has to say in this conversation. So if you use that as a principle, whenever the consensus thinks we're done, it's been pretty profitable to be on the other side of consensus. And so I still kind of maintain that we're probably going to have a five and a half percent Fed funds rate, which means that, I don't know, maybe Credit Suisse will offer me seven and a half percent soon on three month T-bills, but we're going to have higher rates. And I do think Brad's right, though, in the sense that as long as we know that then that's it and we can forecast it into the future without it changing too much, it'll be okay. But right now, what you're seeing is a lot of make-believe going on in in the stock market. So this is a really this interesting This is the chart thing. of uh, cash flow versus earnings. Yeah. So this is something that I saw in Bloomberg, which I thought was really interesting. And if you focus on the period of 2020 to 2024, what you see is the white line, which is net income adjusted for depreciation and amortization. And the blue line is cash flows from operations. So what does that mean? This is the best 500 companies in the world. Yeah. And the white line is what you tell Wall Street in terms of what you make on paper. The blue line is what actually appears in the bank account. So why could there be a gap between what you tell somebody you made, I made a dollar, versus what's in the bank, 50 cents? Well, the reason is that there's all kinds of accounting tricks that you can use, accruals, inventories, and all of these things allow you to present a healthier earnings report than is actually true. And so right now, we have the worst earnings situation, so the worst gap between what we are telling people versus what is actually in the bank account that we've had for 30 years, since 1990. And so it just brings into focus the fact that we may be in the last few innings of trying to make sure this all looks okay, in which case, one faction of the investing world who thinks that this earnings recession is actually at hand would be kind of right. And then what they would say is that once we all realize that these earnings are fake and you reset down 15%, that's where you get to the mid 3000 in, in the S&P 500. Right now, it's around 4000. I don't know if that's true or not, but 
there is more and more evidence that would support that the way that they see the world could be credible. The other side says, hey, listen, this is a bump in the road. We're getting a handle on things and it's stabilizing. So even though it's higher than we'd like, it's not going to change that much. So now just think about 10, 15 years from now and let's go. And those How are the does, folks that you know, want to rip the money into growth stocks and tech stocks again. How does the consumer play into all this? Record low unemployment, like it's 1% in Utah, 3.5% for the country, 2.5 jobs for every American who's unemployed. And then these rents coming down. But consumers have seemed to have burned off all that extra money they had. So, Brad, when you look at the consumer-driven economy that the world lives in. That's not true because you have to understand stimulus is still entering the economy it's just harder to measure so for example take social security you have cost of living adjustments in social security that's lifting payments by 10 and 15 percent because it's backdated for what was going on last year and remember last year we had two three four five percent inflation rates so there is more and more money coming into people's pockets that we don't realize and we're all on the hook for that as u.s taxpayers so I think it's very dangerous to kind of look at one data point and try to pick off what's happening in consumer land because there's all kinds of hidden ways in which money gets back to people. Yeah, I don't think that's a reasonable or an achievable goal for a public company. Okay. I mean, I think the thing we have to keep in mind is Elon's also capable of doing that because he paid $44 billion of his own money to buy something that he owns outright that no longer has revenue pressure to outside stakeholders. Different cir circumstance. Revenue went down 70% at Twitter. Well, that only affects him and, and his ability to pay whatever he borrowed in order to buy that company. And as long as he's willing to fund that somehow, he's literally allowed to do whatever he wants. That's no longer the case when you're borrowing money from other people to build your business, which is what every other capital market participant does, public market participant does, and private market participant. So I think that that distinction is just a little bit important because it probably means that there is a shadow of what Elon is doing that's probably the threshold of what's possible. And it's probably, you know, sort of 50% headcount reduction. That's probably the, the bound in which things break. Because I think the thing to keep in mind is that over time, this stuff is like collagen in the body. It just like, it creates these interconnected webs of just very difficult stuff that you sinew that you cannot tease apart. What are your thoughts on Kamatha's ideas in this regard? Do you believe that this environment will last for a longer period of time than the media and the Fed are leading us to believe it will? Leave a comment down below. This is Market Empire signing off.